this is Alex at Fortes.net um, and I'm looking at the first AM3 Plus board we've had in, the Gigabyte 990 FXA UD7, their top of the range offering. Um, and it supports SLI and Crossfire, which is quite a big deal for an AMD board. Uh, and we'll go into more details about how that works exactly. Um, Gigabyte advertised quite a lot of features on the box as well, which you'll see as part of the main review, such as the driver MOSFETs, um, 333 onboard acceleration, um, and the Ultra Durable 3 specification, which if you want an explanation for, it will all be in the review um, written on Vortez.net. I'm not doing an unboxing right now. Um, you can see the pictures of that again in the full review. You get a usual complement of bits and bobs as well as some nice SLI and Crossfire bridges. Um, there's no NDA anymore either, so we'll be able to talk about performance straight away um, in the written review. So let's show you a little bit more close up of the board. I'll show you first the CPU socket surrounding the area. We've got the 8 plus 2 power phase design here. Um, and here's a glance at the AM3 Plus socket and um, you'll notice that the actual socket itself is now black um, and they've changed slightly the mounting design here so instead of wrapping right the way around um, it's just on the edges this is supposed to help cooling um, but we'll see if it makes much difference at all uh, the holes, you probably can't see it, but the holes in, for the pins in the socket are also a little bit bigger than with the AM3 socket so um, that's just to accommodate the new 32 nanometer processors that are coming out hopefully quite soon um, so the next thing you'll notice um, or the next main feature to point out is that there's four DDR3 slots here and they support dual channel DDR3 up to 32 gigabytes of storage which is quite a lot um, and 2000 megahertz uh, when overclocked and you can see the storage configuration um, we've got SATA 3 ports across the board here all of them are SATA 3 um, the black 6 are controlled by the AMD controller and these grey 2 here are controlled by a Gigabyte own controller which is Marvel I believe it's a Marvel chip right so I can show you a bit more of the board uh, I'll flip over to the I.O. ports and see what sort of connectivity we've got. Um, there's two USBs here, you've got your PS2 keyboard and mouse, digital audio here via coax or SPDIF, Firewire, this is USB 2, this is a bit of a strange one because it's USB 2 and eSATA. Um, we've got two USB ports here again, eSATA, USB 3, 2, um, and two more USB ports, and they're USB 2. Um, this is Gigabit LAN which is provided for by the Realtek 8111E and we've got 7.1 audio um, provided for, for by the Realtek ALC889 codec. Right, so the big thing about this board in particular is the inclusion of all these PCIe slots um, of which there are six. So this allows for lots of different multi-GPU configurations and that's what this board is really about um, as the highest end offering. So as I may have said, you've got capability for SLI 4-way, Crossfire 4-way um, or you can just run your regular Crossfire uh, with two cards or the 3-way. You know, you've really got quite a choice of what you want to run. So firstly, there's two ports here. Um, they're all 16 times length, but they don't, they're not all electronically wired to run at 16 times speed, unfortunately, due to limitations of the chipset. But there's two here, and these will both run at 1616, um, so we can have Crossfire at 1616. Um, there's this one and this one here. They both run at eight times, um, so you can have your four-way Crossfire running like that. Then there's these two here, this one and this one, these both run at four times and you can run smaller cards in these you actually notice you might have to come a bit closer but you can see that the pins only go so far um, up into these big slots so although we've got the big slots in there actually they could get away with being smaller but it just allows you to run cards that are bigger but at a slower speed basically okay so that's about it for this quick preview um, 
there's a few more things on the board that might be worth noting. Um, we've got power switch, reset switch and clear CMOS. We've got all solid capacitors here, which are really nice. Again, you can see that attractive heatsink design um, across the board. Um, some of the features are written on here as well, which will be covered, such as dual BIOS. Um, and some front panel connectivity, audio, firewire, um, USB 2, so you've got up to an additional six USB 2 front ports, a USB 3 header for those few cases that have one, um, and the regular offerings, as well as quite a lot of fan ports, so you can control your cooling via the board, and we'll look at the BIOS and its features in the written review. Okay, thanks for watching, and please check out the full review on Vortez.net.